Did you know that nearly 75% of women will experience at least one vaginal infection in their lifetime? Or that 50% of sexually active women will contract a sexually transmitted infection by the age of 25. These statistics highlight the importance of recognizing unusual vaginal symptoms if and when they happen. In this video, we'll explore the common causes behind these symptoms and provide practical advice on when to seek medical help. Hey everyone, welcome to Ask Away Health with Dr. Sylvia. I'm a consultant in general practice and here we share health information that's not only relevant but relatable. First, meet Emma. She notices a fishy odor and increased vaginal discharge after starting to douche regularly. When she was advised to stop douching and took some regular antibiotics, her symptoms settled. Yes, that is bacterial vaginosis. BV occurs when there's an imbalance of the normal bacteria within the vagina. So harmful bacteria now overgrows and disrupts the natural vagina flora. Symptoms include a thin, grayish white vaginal discharge, a strong fishy odor with itching and possibly burning sensation when you're passing urine. We know it's caused by the gem Gardnerella vaginalis, but things like having multiple sexual partners or a new sexual partner, douching, and other things that could change the vaginal environment like the time of your period could make you more at risk of developing bacterial vaginosis. The treatment is prescribed antibiotics. Commonly, we use metronidazole or clindamycin. What about over-the-counter treatments? Well, they're not usually recommended for treating BV as they're not as effective as antibiotics. And to prevent bacterial vaginosis, avoid douching, make sure you're practicing safe sex and maintain good personal hygiene. Next, meet Olivia. She just finished a course of antibiotics for a chest infection. Then she developed a thick and itchy discharge from down below. She got an over-the-counter antifungal cream and her symptoms seemed to get better after a few days. You got it. This is a yeast or candida or thrush infection. It's caused by an overgrowth of the fungus candida in the vagina. And the symptoms include intense itching, burning sensation, a thick white or cottage cheese type of discharge, and redness or slight swelling around the vulva vaginal area. So what causes it? Well, clearly it's an infection with the fungus candida, but some people are quite sensitive after using antibiotics. It messes up the balance of your natural vaginal flora and puts them at risk of developing thrush. It's also common if there's hormone imbalance, if you have diabetes or a weak immune system. What about treatment? Over-the-counter antifungal creams and ointments or pessaries containing myconazole or clotrimazole can help for mild cases, or you can get a prescription for oral antifungal tablets, which can help to clear resistant or harder to treat thrush infections. What about prevention? Well, it's key to ensure that you're wearing breathable cotton underwear. Avoid tight clothing, and if you're diabetic, make sure that you keep your sugar levels under control. Number three, guys, say hello to Sophia. She experienced a greenish discharge and some pelvic pain recently. After she couldn't bear it anymore, she went off to the hospital for a test. The test confirmed she had gonorrhea and she's treated with antibiotics. So yeah, next up is sexually transmitted infections and you have things like gonorrhea, chlamydia, trachomoniasis, which can all cause vaginal discharge and a plethora of different other symptoms. So commonly there'll be a discharge with an unusual color or smell. There could be pelvic pain, there could be itching, there could be pain during urination, pain during sex, bleeding in between the periods, and more. Hey guys, this is editing Dr. Sylvia and I'm just interrupting the show to let you know something that I did not say, which is that some sexually transmitted infections can show no symptoms. So I know I've talked about vaginal discharge and pelvic pain and so on, but in some cases you may not realize you've got the infection because there are no symptoms. Please keep that in mind. Let's get back into the video. The cause is an infection with a germ that is spread after unprotected sexual intercourse with somebody who has that infection, who, who's, who's been infected with that germ. How do we treat using antibiotics for many of them, for bacterial infections like chlamydia and gonorrhea, for a parasite like trachomoniasis, we use an antiparasitic medication. How do you prevent that? Make sure you have regular sexual screen, stick to one sexual partner 
practice safe sex, use a condom regularly, and so on. Next, let's see what's happened to Auntie Ada. So she's been getting some vaginal dryness and discomfort. After seeing her doctor, they talked about using a vaginal moisturizer and they've had a discussion about HRT hormone replacement and she's starting to feel a lot better so you guessed it we're talking about hormonal changes that can lead to some vaginal symptoms so you can have fluctuations in hormones that can happen during your periods when you're pregnant or like in the case of antiada here around menopause common symptoms are dryness itching and an unusual vaginal discharge may also develop and of course it's happening because there's a change in the estrogen levels which affects the tissues of the vulva and the vagina and also the quantity of secretions that the body usually produces. What about treatments? Well, moisturizers and lubricants can help with vaginal dryness. In some cases, women need to have hormone replacement therapy and that's not by mouth. Just simply using vaginal estrogen only for someone who has vaginal dryness can provide a wealth of relief and is associated with very minimal side effects. So what can a woman do to avoid developing these hormonal imbalance changes? Well, some women don't even experience any of these symptoms, but if you're someone who's prone to them, some of the things that can help are make sure you have a healthy balanced diet, regular exercise, you're taking plenty of water to keep your tissues well hydrated, and really important, you are getting enough sleep. All of these things can help to keep your hormone balance as regular as possible and hopefully minimize the likelihood of these symptoms. So now let's look at what's happening to Charlotte because Charlotte had untreated chlamydia. She didn't know she had chlamydia actually and suddenly developed severe pelvic pain and a fever. She needed to be admitted to hospital. She needed a course of antibiotics. Essentially, she was diagnosed with PID pelvic inflammatory disease. So this is a serious infection of the female reproductive organs. Usually it happens as a result of a, a sexually transmitted infection that's not been properly treated. The symptoms include pelvic pain, an unusual vaginal discharge, fever, painful sex or bleeding in between your periods. It's an infection caused by different types of germs. Having a PID or multiple sexual partners can make you more at risk of developing another one. Treatment is usually a cost of antibiotics. Hospital stay or admission might be necessary if you have very severe infection. How is it prevented? Practice safe sex, stick to one partner, use a condom regularly, and if you develop symptoms, seek medical attention promptly. So now we're going to look at what's going on with Ngozi. She's been getting persistent vulva pain with no obvious cause. She soon overcame her shyness and went off to see her doctor. They used a combination of some medication and pelvic floor therapy, which has remarkably improved her symptoms. So what's going on here? Ngozi is suffering from vulvodynia. It's a chronic pain or discomfort around the vulva that doesn't have any obvious cause. So you might feel a burning sensation. It might be stinging or irritation and rawness around the vulva area. So while a lot of the time the cause is not known, sometimes it might be related to nerve injury, changes in the hormones or inherited genetic factors. Treatment usually involves a combination of different therapies. They include medications which can be painkillers or antidepressants and even some anti-epileptic medication that also act as painkillers. Physical therapy which is therapy to the pelvic floor. If you don't know what your pelvic floor muscles are, if you were sitting on the toilet right now and I said to you stop holding your wee and you squeeze those are your pelvic floor muscles check out this video here where i talk more about the pelvic floor and pelvic floor exercises that you can take to strengthen them especially around pregnancy lifestyle changes may help some people with vulvodynia it might have to do with looking at the diet or wearing breathable cotton fabric if you have vulvodynia you might also benefit from counseling to manage the emotional impact of chronic pain and now let's look at amina's story Amina has developed severe vulva itching over the last few weeks and when she looked in the mirror recently she noticed some white patches that seemed very odd to her. So she's gone off to see her doctor and is diagnosed with lichen sclerosis. She's given a course of topical steroids and very soon her symptoms have disappeared. So what's going on here? This is lichen sclerosis. It's a chronic skin condition that causes white patches and scarring around the vulva, the perineum going towards the anus. 
it is very itchy. It tends to happen more commonly in women as we grow older. Symptoms include, yes, itching, pain. You see white or pale patches on the skin around the vulva area. And the genital skin also appears Thinner. We don't know exactly what causes lichen sclerosis, but it may have to do with an overactive immune response or hormone balance. Treatment is quite simply a course of topical steroids your doctor can prescribe for some weeks to months, which reduces the inflammation and itching. But your doctor will need to keep a very close eye. In a small percentage of cases, it could progress onto vulval cancer. So it's important for your doctor to examine you regularly to ensure that there are no cancer changes developing. The only way to prevent this is by regular checkups, visiting the doctor promptly if itching develops and is not settling down within a very short period of time. So now let's look at Meryl. She's also noticed persistent itching and then she felt a lump on her vulva. It wasn't settling down. It was getting a little bit bigger. So she was worried and went off to see her doctor. She was referred and eventually had a test called a biopsy. This biopsy, which is when a small sample of cells from that lump was examined under a microscope, revealed vulval cancer. She's now being prepped for surgery and other treatments for cancer. Vaginal or vulval cancer are rare, but they can present with unusual vaginal symptoms, persistent itching and unusual discharge, lumps um, that are growing or lumps that just don't disappear, sores or bleeding. We're not sure specifically what causes them, but there is association with HPV infection, that is a human papilloma virus infection, smoking, and if you had precancerous conditions, for example, we just talked about lichen sclerosis. Treatments will depend on the different types and the stage of the cancer, but options include surgery to remove any cancerous tissue, radiotherapy and chemotherapy depending on the stage and how far the cancer has spread. So it's really important to ensure that you have regular screening. Please don't ignore your screening invitations. Keep yourself informed about what screening is recommended for women at different stages. Please don't miss your pap or cervical smears and HPV testing that may detect cancer early. So my dears, you've just learned conditions that can cause unusual symptoms around the vulva and vagina. Hopefully it helps you be proactive to maintain good genital health by taking preventive steps or going to see your doctor sooner than later if you develop any worrying symptoms. Please like this video and share it with your network so somebody else benefits from it. Remember to subscribe and then come and join me in another video from this playlist. I'll be watching for you.